What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the Philly Sports Power Hour with Bill Calarulo. Howie never sleeps. Howie Roseman once again makes a big signing last night. I was just saying to my producer, I put my phone down, was getting ready to relax for the night, thought, okay, there won't be any more breaking news tonight. Nope. Howie Roseman never stops working, signs linebacker Devin White last night. And we'll get into it because we're going to talk about it. Because yesterday on the show, if you tuned in, we were talking about the linebacker position and that name came up and I told you he was not someone that I really liked. So I understand the move and we'll get into it. They do need linebacker help. But for me, it's just another question mark at that position. So we'll talk about it. I see Gary Williams checking in on TikTok. Good to see you. We're streaming live across Jacob Sports as well as Bill Calarulo Philly Sports Talk. Let's get a little roll call because I see a bunch of people checking in on this Friday. A busy week for the Philadelphia Eagles. So we'll talk about the Devin White move. I got a question for you, too. Are you getting any dream team concerns? We'll talk about that. Little Flyers talk, little Sixers talk. We'll end the show like we do every power hour with a little today in sports history. And we'll get ready for the weekend. Weather's starting to change, but let's get a little roll call. I see Tony Brand X checking in on TikTok. I got my man Big Bills in the house. (laughs) Well, you guys crack me up in the chat. You really do. David Laprati checking in. Robert Temple. Flexing and Stefan. TGIF. Striker in the house, Jim G, Jason A team, Fanny, Adams Exploits, Twiz, MC, <laughs> Andrew Dirk, Decoy Gaming, Matt Beach, I Shine 101. Man, a lot of people checking in. Slimville Slugger, Kenny Sprague. I apologize if I missed you. Oh, good. Welcome. Punjab Kings fan, first time on the channel. Well, welcome. And if it's your first time here, we do the Philly Sports Power Hour every day, Monday through Friday, 10 to 11 a.m. It streams both on Jacob Sports as well on my YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed everywhere. Also, make sure you're following along on social media because we do post content all day long on all of our platforms. And we're now on TikTok as well. So just me today. No guest, but we got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. So let's jump right into the biggest news of the evening. Linebacker Devin White. Like I said, if you follow me, if you were here all week on this show, you know that my biggest concern on the defensive side of the football was the linebacker position. It was hard for it not to be our biggest concern because last season going into the year, We all knew and we all expected the linebacker position to be a problem. They let TJ Edwards walk last offseason. They let Kazir White walk last offseason. And they went into this year, even though we were all calling for it, if you follow me, I was pounding my fist on the table all offseason that you could not go into last year with just N'Kobe Dean as your main linebacker. Because we hadn't seen him do it yet. He had only played 34 career snaps. We didn't know what we had in Devin Devin White. We'll get there. In the Kobe Dean. But they did it anyway. They went into last season with a lot of question marks. You didn't know what you had in the Kobe Dean. We didn't know what we had in Nick Morrow. And then during training camp, it became obvious that they needed help at that position. So Howie Roseman turns around. He brings in Zach Cunningham off the street. He brings in Miles Jack off the street. Miles Jack retires a week after he brings him in. And Zach Cunningham actually played, I'm going to say, quote, unquote, well. I don't think he was a game changer out there, but for picking a guy up in the middle of training camp, Zach Cunningham played okay. How about that? Not well, okay. N'Kobe Dean gets hurt. They get super desperate. They ended up 
cutting Nick Morrow in training camp, bringing him to the practice squad. Then he ends up playing. He just signs with the Buffalo Bills. They get so desperate in the middle of the season, they pick up Shaq Leonard that the Indianapolis Colts said, look, we're on the hook for his contract. We don't care. We're in a playoff chase. We don't care. We're cutting him because that's what they thought of Shaq Leonard. So the Eagles were super desperate at linebacker last year. So going into this offseason, for me, that was one of the main priorities. In addition to safety, I wanted a linebacker. More than any other position, I wanted linebacker. I had that as number one on my list. I would put safety and linebacker as one and one A on the list of needs. And as exciting as the Saquon Barkley signing is, because it's exciting, as much as I like the Bryce Huff signing because he is a pass rush specialist who's going to put a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. That's what he does. But even though I liked those moves, I'm not a huge fan of this if this is the only move at linebacker. Because for me, once again, as we sit here, and I told you yesterday, we do need to be patient. We do need to be patient because the way the roster looks right now doesn't mean it's going to look like this come August. But right now, you look at linebacker, and it is still a major question mark. Nicobe Dean. Whether you're high on him or not, big question mark going into this season. We still do not know if this guy can play at the NFL level. We saw him at Georgia, but we're now three years removed from what he did at Georgia. We saw him dominate the SEC. I still have hope that N'Kobe Dean can come in here and be that guy and lead this defense because you know he's got great leadership skills. And we talked about this yesterday. Who's going to step up and lead that defense? Well, you can't lead if you can't play. You can have all the greatest leadership skills and leadership qualities in the world. If you can't play on the field, nobody's going to follow you. In fact, they'll start to tune you out if you can't produce on the field. So, Kobe Dean, question mark. Ben Van Sumeren played fullback a couple years ago in college. Major question mark at linebacker. And now the Philadelphia Eagles signed Devin White to a one-year deal. We'll get the details, but it's supposed to be worth up to $7.5 million. And whether you like the move or not, you have to agree, question mark. We don't know what we're getting in Devin White. We don't know how he's going to produce in this defense next season. So now I still look at the linebacker position. And again, we're only a few days into free agency. Things can change. I'm not making my final judgments on this offseason yet. We're only a week into it. But right now, even with the Devin White signing, and I know people are excited because it's a big name. The linebacker position is still a question mark. And I see people on TikTok, Tin Man, saying he wanted Patrick Queen. So did I. If you follow me or this show, you know Patrick Queen was one of my top free agents that I wanted to see them get. They don't get him. They don't get Frankie Louvu. Some of the older linebackers signed elsewhere. So I understand why they made this move. It's only a one-year deal, and we'll get into Devin White and the details of him in a second. So I understand why they did it, but I'm not satisfied. For me, I still am holding out hope. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm still holding out hope that Howie Roseman's going to figure out a way to make a trade for a sure thing at linebacker. I don't know if they'll do it. If history tells us anything, I could see Howie Roseman just bringing back Zach Cunningham and now going into this season with N'Kobe Dean, Devin White, Zach Cunningham. If that's the case, how do you feel about that? Would you be okay with the linebacker core? N'Kobe Dean, Devin White, Zach Cunningham, Ben Van Sumeren. Because that's a real strong possibility. I wouldn't be okay with that. 
I think you need a sure thing, and we don't have it yet at linebacker. A lot of potential there. Certainly a lot of potential at linebacker. N'Kobe Dean could be a stud. Devin White with a change of scenery and new coaching could be a stud. Ben Van Subaren could surprise everybody and could be a solid player. But all we have right now is could. And for me, when you look at this team and you look at the offense and you look at some of the players on this defense, could be isn't good enough for me. I wanted a sure thing. I wanted to turn the linebacker position from a question mark to an exclamation point this offseason. I wanted a game changer. I wanted somebody that can impact games at the linebacker position, and I don't think they have that right now. Potential, but sometimes potential gets you freaking nowhere in this league. So let's take a look at it, though. Devin White, 26 years old, was the number five overall pick in 2019 out of LSU. Still young. I get it. 26. He is an elite athlete. I mean, you talk about athleticism. This guy has it. Maybe the most athletic linebacker they've had. I'm trying to think back as to when the last time they had a linebacker with this much athleticism. Maybe never. I mean, he is a freak athlete. Six feet, 240 pounds. He ran the 40 in 4-4-2. So you look at him, I'm not sure, and tell me in the chat if you're here, the last time they had a linebacker with this much athleticism, not talking about his skill on the field, just his athleticism, I'm not sure they've ever had one that has this level of athlete in him. But that doesn't always translate to the field. So he gets drafted fifth overall out of LSU in 2019. He was a second-team All-Pro in 2020. Now, part of the reason why he made that all pro, because if you really dive deeper into the stats, was because of his ability to get after the quarterback. He's a very good blitzer from that linebacker position. He can get after the quarterback. That's exciting. That is an exciting thing in a Vic Fangio offense, or excuse me, in a Vic Fangio defense, if Fangio could figure out ways to use him. But we also know that Fangio doesn't blitz a lot. When Devin White was in Tampa, Todd Bowles was the defensive coordinator and the head coach, who we know loves to blitz. Always in the top of the league in blitzing. So that's what Devin White did really well. Well, they're not going to do that a lot. Or at least I don't think they're going to do that a lot with the Philadelphia Eagles. So his second team all pro in 2020, a lot of it had to do with his ability to get after the quarterback. Here's also a crazy stat. I just told you that he was the fifth overall pick in 2019. In the past six years, there has only been one linebacker and one running back taken with the top five picks in the NFL draft. And both of them are now on the Philadelphia Eagles. Saquon Barkley, number two overall in 2018. Devin White, number five overall in 2019. Both of them on the Philadelphia Eagles now. Interesting. But let's go some positives for Devin White for a second, because I know I'm being a little bit negative here. 75 career starts in the regular season. Another six playoff starts. Health really hasn't been an issue for him over his career. Won a Super Bowl in 2020 with the Bucs and Tom Brady, obviously. Was a captain on that team. And when I talk about his health, you look at the percentage of snaps that he's played for this defense, and that's pretty good. 73% as a rookie. 93% in 2020 when they win the Super Bowl. 95% in 2021. 96% 
in 2022. And then this past season, close to 80%. And a lot of that was because he got benched at the end of the season. So that's an alarming thing. The Buccaneers, who didn't bench him because, hey, let's just go with some younger guys. They were in a playoff chase. They were in an NFC South chase to win that division, which they ended up doing. They benched him. They had enough of him. So that's a little bit alarming. But I told you he can blitz the quarterback. So in his career, on 700 passing snaps, he's generated 155 quarterback pressures. That's really good. From the linebacker position. Now, he's not an edge rusher. He's not an outside linebacker like a Hassan Reddick. He's a true linebacker. To be able to generate 155 QB pressures in only 700 pass rushing snaps is pretty damn good. But like I said, this was on a defense with Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles loves to blitz. They're not going to do that. Vic Fangio's not a big blitzer. That's not his style of defense. But my major concern, major concern with Devin White is his pass coverage. He has been really, and it's a surprise because I just talked to you how athletic he is. You would expect an athletic linebacker like Devin White to be really good in pass coverage. Devin White's not. In his career, he has allowed an 80% completion rate. 80%. Opposing quarterbacks have a passer rating of 104.6 when targeting Devin White. That just doesn't make sense. You're this athletic and you are that bad in pass coverage? And the other problem is he hasn't been very good against the run either. He's got tackling issues. So I understand the move. He's out there. He's a free agent. He's still young. He's only 26 years old. He's got all the athleticism and potential in the world. But this can't be the only thing you do at linebacker. You just can't. It's too big of a question mark. Talked about how he's bad in pass coverage. I just talked about how he's a bad tackler. The other problem is he's over-aggressive at times. And opposing offenses are too smart. They're too good. They use that against him. They use that over-aggressiveness against him. Now, you could look at that and say, oh, well, he just hasn't been coached properly. He's going to come in here. He's going to have Vic Fangio who's coached linebackers for a decade in this league, has been a defensive coordinator for 20 years, he's going to be fine. This coaching staff's going to get him there. He had a pretty good coach in Todd Bowles in Tampa. Now, I don't know how you feel about Todd Bowles as a head coach, but he's a pretty good defensive coach, well-respected in this league. And if they couldn't get Devin White playing up to his potential. Are the Philadelphia Eagles going to? So that's the big fear I have. And let's look at his pro football focus grades. And I know we've talked about it before on this show. You can't take the pro football focus grades as gospel because they're not. But just listen to his pro football focus grades over his career. And a little teaser, they're absolutely terrible. As a rookie, His overall grade was a 52. Now, this is on a scale of 100. Overall grade, 52. 2020, a 43. 2021, 36. 2022, 45. And 2023, 46. That is terrible. To help you understand how terrible that is, Nick Morrow last year, was a 72. Zach Cunningham was a 69, and Shaq Leonard was a 63. 
So Morrow, Cunningham, and Shaq Leonard's grades last year, Devin White has never reached that in his five-year career. Ever. Think about that for a second. Do you think we had good linebacker play last year with the Philadelphia Eagles? Devin White's never been graded as high as any of those three linebackers were last year. Doesn't get me excited. Major question mark still on this team, in my opinion. And anybody that follows this show, you know, sometimes you come after me because I'm too positive. You know I am never, ever negative just for the sake of being negative. I'm never going to say anything just for clicks. I'm never going to be overly negative just for the cause of it. But this, in my opinion, is still a question mark. I'm okay with the signing. Trust me. I like the signing because it's a low-risk move. It's only one year. He's in a contract year, so you know you're going to get the best version of Devin White. He needs to play well if he wants to get a next contract. So I understand why you make the move, but for me, this can't be the only move. Just like the Chauncey Gardner-Johnson signing, I like that move. But it can't be all we do at safety. And I'm not saying it will be. It's a long offseason. I went through it with you yesterday about what Howie Roseman has done in previous years around the draft, as training camp approaches. So there's still a chance that he could make a move. So I'm not angry at bringing in Devin White. I get why you did it. There's not a lot of options out there. In my opinion, there is no strong options still remaining in free agency. So if they're going to do anything at linebacker, to me, it's got to be via a trade. So when I see some people talking about the pro football focus grades, and I get it, they're not always gospel. But when you get rated that badly every single season, that's telling you something. That is telling you something. I understand they may get it wrong. They may get it wrong for a game or two, but you look at this, and then I guess, you know, one of the things we could ask ourselves, well, in 2020, he gets a grade of a 43, and he's a second-team All-Pro. Well, how's that possible? Well, if you look, that was his pass rush that year. Because in 2020, although he was a 43 overall, he was a 40 in pass coverage, a 41 against the run, and 86 in the pass rush. That's the one thing he's done very well over his career is to be able to get after the quarterback. But does that translate to a Vic Fangio defense? Does that translate to a defense that's not going to blitz a lot? That's not going to bring their linebackers a lot? So I'm just not sure how I feel about it if this is the only answer. And I get it. Look, as fans, we see the name, especially if you follow college football. Studded LSU. There's a reason why he was the number five overall pick back in 2019. So we see the name and we get all excited. Oh, how he does it again. What a move. What a move. But if you really dive into this guy, he hasn't played that well. Even if you give him 2020, his second team all pro season, even if you say, okay, wow, he played really well. In 2020, they won a Super Bowl in 2020. He has not played that well over his last three seasons, so much so that he was benched this year by the Bucs. So I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the move. It's low risk. It's only one year. We're not going to sit here and act like this was a disaster because it's not a disaster to sign a guy to a one-year deal that has potential who's an elite athlete. It's not a disaster. It's not a bad move. My only concern is if this is the only move at linebacker. I think they need more. I think they need more than what they have in the Kobe Dean and Ben Van Sumeren and Devin White, question mark, question mark, question mark. And I don't think there's anybody here in the chat who is watching along on TikTok who can tell me otherwise. There's not a single person 
not even Vic Fangio or Howie Roseman or anybody in the NFL who can say, oh, yeah, N'Kobe Dean, Devin White, and Ben Van Sumeren, they're all going to work out. We just don't know. We can hope. We talked about this earlier. Could be, could be, could be no definites. I wanted a definite at the linebacker position. And I know there's people talking about the draft. Whoever they draft, even if they use their first overall pick at number 22 in the first round on a linebacker, guess what? It's a question mark because there's no guarantee that that linebacker who's going to be a rookie is going to be able to translate from the college to the NFL level. So now you would have four question marks at linebacker. So I'm not mad at the move. I'm not bashing Howie for the move. I think it's a good move. Why not bring in a guy on a one-year deal that has all that potential? But for me, it's just you can't be done. And maybe he's not. I'm not saying he is. But that's how I feel about the Devin White move. But when we get back, I want to ask you in the chat, if you have any dream team concerns, and I think you know what I'm talking about when I say dream team. So we're going to take a quick break on YouTube. Hit that like button. Hit that share button for me. This is the Philly Sports Power Hour with Bill Calarulo. We will be right back. 